I take glycine, actually specifically trimethylglycine, is is actually to, to counter what I think might be going on with an NAD booster. Now, to raise NAD levels, what we've done in my lab to mice for the last decade is we give them precursors to NAD. So we give them molecules like nicotinamide riboside or NR or nicotinamide mononucleotide, also known as NMN, not to be confused with MNMs, which will have the opposite effect. And uh, so NMN is, is what I take each day. I take a, a gram of it. But the thing with nicotinamide mononucleotide NMN is that it, it has this nicotinamide group on it. It hangs off the, the main part of the chemical. And it's the first bond to break. And so we see in animals and even in humans that the levels of nicotinamide go up quite rapidly after taking NMN or NR. And too, too high levels of nicotinamide are not good, um, in part because the nicotinamide gets excreted through the kidneys and it's done so, that happens because it becomes methylated into methyl nicotinamide. Mm -hmm. And methyl nicotinamide has been used for, for years as a marker of all sorts of things, in, including at least experimentally for Parkinson's disease. But the concern that's, that's being talked about uh, in social media especially is, is this drain of methyl nicotinamide a problem? The, the methyl groups are, are needed for the body. We need methyl for a whole range of things, including um, antioxidants. And uh, so as a precaution, I take trimethylglycine so that uh, I continue to give the, my body a source of methyl groups. Now, I don't know if that's true. Uh, people ask me all the time. I take it as a precaution because I know that trimethylglycine is not going to hurt me. Glycine is mm -hmm. good, as you mentioned, Joe. Um, and the other thing is methylglycine is also known as betaine, uh, which on human cells is very good for them, um, including protecting them against stress. So I don't, I don't see any downside. It's not an expensive molecule. And the upside is that I'm preventing my body from being drained of methyl groups. So I do take it as a precaution, knowing that, that it's probably not doing anything um, except goodness. As we age, what happens is our cells are using more NAD than they can make or recycle. It means there's a deficit. And the repair and maintenance processes down here in the cell that are actually dependent on NAD, they have to fight over a limited supply of NAD. This ultimately leads to damage and then to some signs and symptoms of aging. If we go back to the little diagram here, what happens if you just use a supplement such as NR or NMN, a precursor-based supplement, the precursor goes into the cell it does get converted into NAD, which is why you see um, companies that produce these um, molecules show around a 60% increase in NAD boost with these supplements. So you do get an increase in NAD, but this NAD is then used up and it's broken down. And as soon as it's broken down, it's converted into nicotinamide. And if you haven't fixed the underlying problems in the cell, which are causing NAD to decline, namely this reduction in the salvage pathway because of this enzyme that's declined with age, what happens is the cell has to get rid of it. So it methylates it and it excretes it. Then if you just continue pumping more NR or more NMN into the system without trying to fix the salvage pathway, you just keep contributing to the problem because you, your cells are using up this initial boost of NAD, but it's getting converted into nicotinamide and then the nicotinamide has to get out of the cell. So you get methyl donor depletion. And this is why many practitioners will say to the clients, you need to use um, trimethylglycine or something like that to, to actually stop these negative effects because a depletion in methyl groups is actually really bad for epigenetics because it's very important for altering the structure of your DNA.